<laughs> All right, guys, and we're live. Welcome to the podcast. I hope you guys had a great week. I um, hope you enjoyed the new lesson that just came up. Because it's a new thing, I, you know, people have been asking me to do different kind of video lessons all along, and then I get more and more ideas. I've got a, a list about a page long of different things that I really want to do. But the fun thing is, um, is important. So like you want to have fun with your dog. You want to just take your dog and be able to do something simple, like a rollover, a play dead, and there's a bunch of other ones coming. It's not going to be all the, be all the content I have, but it's going to be um, some new stuff coming in there. So today i got a really, really special show for you guys. It's a different kind of show because a lot of people have asked me, hey, can I learn how to train my dog online? Real common question. That's why, you know, we have this site. For years, I spent um, days and days and days teaching people their dog training, how to handle their dogs, how to work with their dogs, how to do competitive obedience, basic, every kind of everything you can imagine. I also spent 12 plus years in shelters helping dogs that many people thought were untrainable, did, did lectures, um, did training and did all that. And then I thought, how can I make the best use of my time? Well, one of the best uses of my time was in going to the shelter and teaching people the skills that I had on training. That allowed me to take that skill that I think was a God-given skill that I, I harnessed along but gave me the ability to take that skill and give it to people who really, really wanted to do the right thing and help shelter dogs. And now I've got, I mean, several hundred people have trained under me who, you know, some people, you'll see them in here who, who will stop in. And um, we're now doing the same kind of things, which is awesome. It makes me super happy to see that. Then I thought, how can I do that with my dog training, my personal dog training, competitive obedience, protection, whatever it is um, that people want to do. And I thought, well, you know what? Why don't I do a website? And um, that's exactly what I did. So robertcabral.com evolved out of that, started out as a free YouTube channel because I wanted to get the information out there for free. But then people were asking me, can I have more information? Can I have more training? Can I have this and that? And the only way really to do that was to open a website that would be dedicated to that. And I did that. I had paid somebody to do some basic programming so that it would work. I didn't really have the knowledge to do that. And then out of the blue, I always think that God works in mysterious ways. Um, some crazy strange guy contacted me and said, hey, could I redesign your site for you? As stupid as I was, I said, okay. Um, Janet said, whatever you do, don't just have some guy who contact you over the internet work with you. And um, I, I just talked to this guy a little bit, email, we talked on the phone, and I got a good feeling, I trusted my gut. And that guy was Alan, and Alan came along and um, really worked a lot with me and helped me and um, was there's Alan right there. He didn't know I was going to put him on that quick. Um, but uh, oh, hello. he came on, Alan's on, um, and really helped the vision I had for this site um, really come together. And I want to thank him for that. He's a super cool guy. He's the guy, if you have any technical issues on the site, uh, he's going to help you through it. If you have any questions about things or you have any suggestions, he's the guy you get when you, when you email me. And, um, and welcome to the show, Alan. Quite the intro. I appreciate it. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. So um, let's today spend a little bit of time in talking about the new site and what we've done, um, what you've done and what, what, what we envisioned together to making this site the, the, the amazing thing that it is and that it's becoming because we really changed a lot of things that are really not out there on dog training websites. Yeah, I mean, um, the main thing I wanted to do with the website is because I was, uh, obviously I was a member first, you know, uh, when I got my German Shepherd, I was out there looking for a uh, trainer. So when I came across you, I really liked your style. You know, we reached out, I think at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly we just kind of worked together. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of transform the website into what I would kind of expect to use, you know, if I was a member on the site. And you, you kind of gave me the keys to the kingdom and, uh, you know, gave me the ability to do it. Yeah. And we've done, I mean, we've done a lot on the site. A lot has changed. The membership has increased significantly. But also, I think what's the most important, not only the, the, the um, <clears throat> amount of people, but the amount of quality instruction and information that we're really able to get out now with the new yep. format, right? Definitely. It's much, yeah. It's much more user friendly. A lot of the members are, are saying, no, if you're, you're here on YouTube, you can still go to the outside of the site. Um, and we're going to show you some features that you guys as just as non-members can get. And we're actually going to 
eventually kind of blossom the site into more and more stuff that will have, you know, that have more free stuff, I think is the way we want to say it. Because it's really important to get information out there. There's, I put new videos on YouTube all the time, several a week, that help people with their dogs. Because just because you can't afford the 15 bucks a month that the membership to Wishcast doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to access information. I truly believe that. That's a very, very important part for me, and Alan agreed with me on that. So every week when you see, for example, this week's lesson, the, the trick dog um, video, Play Dead with Goofy, you can see a four or five minute version of the video. And if you're a member, then you're gonna get like a, well, I don't know, how, what is it, like 20, 25 minutes of that video more in detail as well as the rollover video. And it's always like that. Every single week there's something more for members, but always something for free on YouTube. And today, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sh let Alan show you the site inside and out and give you a quick tour of what it's like for the f on the free side as well as on the member side. And, and uh, just take a couple of minutes, Alan. I'm going to switch the screen over to the, um, to the website. You, you take it from here. Okay. Give him some tour, okay? Here you go, guys. All right, sounds good. So here, uh, I mean, you switched it over? Okay, cool. Yep, yep. So if you're just a free member and you're not signed in, you still have the capability of uh, browsing like courses. So you would just click courses. You can filter them by newest or categories. So we'll use your latest uh, dog trick training one. From here, um, if you're uh, just a, a you know a free user, I should say, you can come preview the course. You can play a little video right there uh, that Robert makes, the little promo videos. Um, we have, at the time of this recording, we have 105 courses. We also have groups. We'll go in here briefly, but we'll go into more when, when I actually sign into my account. But here, our members um, are interacting with each other. You have to be a member to uh, comment, to you know, post updates, to start forum posts. But you can, you can see the discussions and you can see what's going on without having to be a member. But you just need to be a member to take advantage of the features. So what we can do real quick, did you want to say anything before I log in as a, no, as I, a member? I, I think it's kind of important. Like I saw just before you were scrolling through the member questions are there. So people could actually listen to that if we're posting a video or somebody posts a video. The, can the, can the non-members actually go to there and see that as well? They can, yeah. They would just okay. you know, press play. And, and these are the answers to the questions that have been submitted by members for the week. OK. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, let's let's take a look at the member side. OK, cool. Uh, so here we would just sign in on the top right. Uh, this is just going to be my test account. Uh, when you sign in, it's going to take you immediately to uh, a members page where we kind of go over uh, some new features. We're advertising the members live stream um, that is starting soon. Um, the newest lessons. These are also the last two videos of the member questions that you do. And then there's the form down here for members to submit the questions to you. First thing we'll go over, um, let me bring up my notes here, is the fact that now when you sign up, you have, essentially you have a profile, right? So you can view your profile here. You just click profile. Do you wanna say something? Nope. Oh, okay, just a deep breath. All right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> So from here, we can set custom things. You can set your own profile image. We can do that here. Bring up Enzo. As this loads up, you can kind of uh, you can kind of create and crop your own thing. Um, and then if we go back and take a look at the profile, now we have the picture of Enzo. You can also create a Cover image, this is the default one with Goofy. Um, we can use this one for the background. What do we have here? So we'll go back to the profile, you see it. And then that's uh, my wife and Enzo on his first birthday. Um, let's see, what else can we go over? We do have some privacy um, settings because I know, you know, obviously some members are gonna wanna be private, they may, they may not want to interact with the community and that's perfectly fine. From here, you can set your profile visibility. You can, uh, by default, I'm actually um, disabling the members directory just because, you know, maybe not everybody wants to be listed automatically. So we have that 
as off on default. You can turn that on. And then you just have some more information here. Um, there's also a notifications tab but that incorporates into the groups. So what we'll do, we'll go over courses first. Um, what you can do is, let's go create by, filter by new. So let's say the trick dog training again. We'll start with that one. If I'm a member, now I have the option to enroll in the course. And what enrolling in the course does is it puts this course into your profile so you can keep track. Because maybe you're not interested in all 105 training uh, videos, which you should, but maybe you're not, right? So you would start the course here. And then from here, you have the content. This is the members only video that only members can see. You also have the option of turning on dark mode if it's too bright for you or you're trying to do it late at night. You, you'll have access to the videos or since this is a two-parter, one of them is play dead, the other one. So after I watch the video, I can mark this as complete. Then it'll take me to the next video. If there is, most of them are just one video lesson where we might start doing two, you know, video lessons depending on, you know, what, uh, what, what route we take. And then say I, I finished this one as well, or actually let's not finish that one. And what it shows us now is it's 50% complete because we've only watched one of the two lessons. So we can continue that, you know, anytime, or we can go back to courses and I'll click on my course. And then right here is the trick dog training. And we can see that it's 50% complete. You know, the ones we have completed, I did hundred percent. The ones I haven't started yet, but I put them in my courses because I want to watch them in the future. Right. I might not have time to, to do it now, but the course might, you know, gather my interest and I might want to watch it uh, in the future. Anything you want to say about courses? No, I think, I mean, that's really important. I mean, just the ability to organize things and organize your thoughts. You may sit down one day and want to pick up, okay, you know, these are four things I want to do, but I can't watch them now, but they'll be in your queue. So it gives members the ability to really pinpoint their trainings and, and get that going. Yep, correct. Really cool feature. Uh, another cool feature, we'll go back to trick dog training since we're using that. Um, if I go to roll over, now we have the option to take notes and you'll notice that option right here on the bottom right of your screen. Um, so when you do that, you have a little pop up and you can just write yourself some notes. So, you know, learning how to teach my dog to roll over. Um, and this also works, you know, while you're playing the video, uh, let me turn this down. I don't know if that audio picked up or not, but you can kind of have it off to the side and take notes while watching Robert, you know, teach us new abilities, <laughs> you know? So after that, we can save it. We also have the option to print it directly from there if it's something that we want, you know, to have right away. We can also convert it to a a mic, uh, Microsoft Word pad. So after that, it's saved. Um, and if you ever, and that, and that means it, it gets saved to like a general My Notes um, page. And then here, every member on the left side when they log in, they get like a new menu tab. And if they just click on My Notes you will have the notes that you've saved. And then this one will take you to the note, you know, that we just did right now. Okay. That's, I mean, I think it's, that's huge. And then, and then each note, you can have different notes for each lesson or each, each course, right? Yep. And then wherever you take the note, whatever lesson you take the note or course on, uh, it has it marked right here. So we took the note on the video lesson rollover. Right. And then from here, you can delete notes. If you have a bunch of extra ones, you know, or you can print them, you can do whatever you want from there. Okay. So somebody just had a question and I, I'm going to just throw it out there. I didn't, I didn't prepare anything. And, and a lot of this is just total conversation between me and Alan today. Um, somebody said, is there a, a way, and I, I don't know if it's something we want to add. I mean, I can see pros and cons to it. Actually, let me pull us back on the screen so we can, um, we, we can be chatting. Um, if we had the ability to um, turn the, the discussions on where other people could chime in, but they couldn't start the discussion. Is that is there is that ability even present there? Like, I mean, I don't think it's a good idea personally. I mean, but just 
putting it out there? Um, I mean, it, it could be a possibility. You know, the problem we run in is if we open the floodgates, you know, you get all, all the bad things that come along with, you know, anybody being able to comment. We might implement a feature where, like, say a member can invite five friends that have the ability to interact with, a, mm. you know, with the community. Right. You know what I mean? We could probably do something like that as, as yeah. a test run. Um, you know, but in, that, that'd be maybe like a month or so down the line before we would try something like that. Yeah. I mean, we just, guys, we just launched this this week. It's already getting a huge, huge response. I think it's really uh, amazing what we're seeing. The main thing I really liked about this, in the, in the initial thoughts when, we, when Al and I were talking about changing the site a lot, is I, want, I wanted a forum because I hate you guys all know how I hate hate social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. It just gets every time you talk about something, it spirals into something political or something, you know, one way of dog training and it, criticizing people. It, that's not what dog training is about. I've got tons of friends who are dog trainers. They're very good dog trainers. We agree on much, much, much more than we ever disagree on. The only people who are always disagreeing with people are people who have never really trained dogs, right? They're just people who have spent their whole life disagreeing with the way people are actually doing what they should be doing instead of disagreeing. So the, the, our, our groups are really geared towards people who love dogs and who really want to talk about positive things. You want to share a picture of your dog? Great. I mean, how many pictures have I shared, videos have I shared of Goofy running on the treadmill and some morons there like, well, you're abusing your dog. You know, I know you're not abusing your dog. I know if you're putting your dog on a treadmill, you spend several thousand dollars on the treadmill and you're trying to get your dog in shape and there's reasons for it. And I'm going to make a video on that at some point. But right now, these forums are really for the members who really want to spend the time to really um, learn and, and share. That's, that's really what it's about. I want everybody to get really something out of this that's going to be beneficial. And that's, that's why I think these groups are so, so great. Yeah, and, and it makes having a membership, you know, have a little more value, obviously, you know, it, it helps keep the, um, you know, the opinionated people out, you know, and it's just more good, you know, more valuable content for members themselves. Yeah, I mean, the site is really about, you know, it's about having fun, loving your dog, training your dog. But um, it, it's, it's important that people get in a good discussion. I think we've really priced the site very, very reasonably where most people can afford. I understand you live in, you know, in Pakistan or India or South America or in Mexico or something. You might not have that. You might just have the free thing. I totally get it. But um, it, it's, it's going to keep growing. Um, I, I hope to have more stuff free out there. We'll, we're going to figure that out. We're going to figure a way to do it without it being overwhelming. Because just remember, I mean, you see right now you're seeing on the screen the entire team you're dealing with. Janet is, is a huge member of the team and she's upstairs now. But it's like Alan is the guy who I hired on to really bring this together, and, and he's done a great job. So we can't expect too much. You know, I've got to, you know, I've got to stay focused on what I got to do, and that is getting you guys dog training information. Alan's got to stay focused on keeping the site running, which he's doing a great job at. And we're gonna we're, we're rolling it out slowly, but just know that it's not like we you know, just wham bam we put it out there and then it doesn't work and the site crashes. We're spent a lot of time getting it this way and i gotta tell you it's been a very big investment financially to get it to this point i built this from member one the first member that came on i remember when that person signed on and i said i saw an email that somebody joined up i thought i was so happy and now we've got you know tons and tons of members but my dedication to you guys is the same it's it's still very very focused on that alan you want to add anything yeah. to that no, I mean you, you know you hit uh, you hit the nail on the head. I have the forums pulled up. If you want to switch over, we can briefly go over that as Let's well. Let's do it. Hang on. So here's the forums, guys. Okay, so the forums is um, is titled groups. Groups is essentially kind of like um, how do I say like an updated version of forums. Normally, forums is just a place where you just go and you kind of start. You can see the discussion where people will start a specific topic. Um, here's one where we have uh, someone started one, a question about spaying and neutering, right? But what you can do is there, we have the, the group split up into a general members, one where members can kind of talk amongst themselves. We have a specific one for working and sport dogs. We have another group for puppies. If people, you know, new people are coming in, everyone, there's always somebody with a new puppy, you know, so they can, uh, they can interact in this forum or people or members who want to help you know, new puppy owners, you know, with some issues. 
but we'll go into general members as an example. And from here, um, you know, I posted the uh, MA, AMA video that you do. From here, you have the option to, do I, am I logged in? No, I think I have to be logged into my other account. But from here, um, you can see what the uh, members are talking about. You don't need to start a discussion to interact within this group. You can just start talking. You do have to be a member. Or you can start a discussion, which is a discussion is essentially a forum post. From here, people can you know create topics for uh, other members to, let's see what we can do here. Here's a nice one where somebody created a topic honoring their past dogs that have passed away. So people are, you know, sharing, sharing pictures of, you know, their, their dogs that have passed away, you know, but it's a nice, nice way to honor them. So, you know, groups is really cool. I think this is going to be honestly one of the main reasons um, for people to, to just stay involved in the community. And then you get the benefit of having all the knowledge between, you know, members, because we've had some members that have been here for, you know, for over a year. So the knowledge they've accumulated through the questions that they've had answered through you, you know, there, you know, there, there's a lot of knowledge here and we have a lot more members that can, uh, you know, join up to these groups. A lot of members don't haven't, uh, don't know about the new features yet. So we're reaching out to everybody and kind of letting them know, you know, about what's going on with the new site. Cause like you said, this is a few days old, you know, we pretty much just, just started this. And I think a really important aspect here is, you know, dog training should be a team effort. Like, in other words, a lot of people have great knowledge. I remember teaching at the Bound Angels University at the shelters. And once somebody kind of had some knowledge, then they could take somebody else's hand and help them along. And that would give them, give them the information that they would have before I needed to even step in. And that really helped people along. Because I can't a lot of times just get an answer a question really quick for you, although I would want to. The goal is to have now a community of people who can help you along and pull you along. And then later you can be one of those people that really helps pull people along. And the, the chain can keep going and going and going. And, and I think that's huge with the forums. Yep, I agree. It's really cool. Right. So I, I think it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm just loving seeing people join. Like I said, we launched it just a few days ago. So people who have trickled into the groups are those people who are actually really active on the site, who are in there, who are, mm -hmm. you know, reading it and who are part of it. But um, I think it's going to really expand. So I, I think by the end of the weekend, we'll have a lot of people because we're going to talk about it in the member section tomorrow. Uh, today. Yep. Yeah, sorry. At 10 o'clock. Yeah. All right. Let me pull you back up here. Um, so, so anyway, so that's, is there anything else we want to cover on this? Cause I think we've really, um, covered no, I mean, all. those are the two main, those are the two main points, you know, for now we'll be adding more features as time goes on. And then, you know, maybe we'll, we'll talk about those when, when that time comes. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're just adding things all the time. I did a great podcast video, uh, yesterday with a great woman who runs a great organization, um, called vested interest in canine. So, um, we're also adding the podcast now to the site. So, you know, if you're going to want to watch one of my podcasts or you want to order gear, we're going to talk about the gear in a second too. Um, it's all one stop. So I want to talk about the gear for a second. I'm not going to do too many things on dog training um, today. I, I hope the audio is fine. I, somebody complained about the audio. I turned it up a little bit. I don't, I don't like it pegging the meters. But um, so remember, I started the site really on my dime. I didn't, there's no investors, there's no, you know, no seed money, no um, initial public offerings or anything like that. It was, it was my dime I started it on with um, member one. And I think we've grown it into something that's really pretty spectacular. I mean, it's really, really helped a lot of people and it's continuing to do that. Um, there's an exciting announcement coming for with, um, with some of my shelter work. Um, that training will be another thing that Al and I are building into um, a site where you'll be able to learn the skills to work with rescue dogs and shelter dogs. And that's from years of Bound Angels University um, videos that I've accumulated that I will be, that's probably coming in a few, in probably six months or so, because we got to get that all focused now that we're just kind of wrapping up some of the work here. Um, if you guys have any questions about the site, I would um, address those. Or is there any other questions about the site? I'm kind of looking through. Um, I don't really see any questions about the site. I think all the questions coming through are really about training, which I just want to um, 
avoid for now. And Janet's on there really doing a, a really great job in helping people understand stuff. Um, thank you for that, Jan. I, I appreciate it very much. Um, okay, so the sound is good. So let's talk for a second. Um, can you, um, Alan, pull up the merchandise um, page on the site? Because I want to talk about that for a second. For, you know, yep. for, ye for years, guys, everybody's asked me, oh, you should do a clothing line, you should do a logo line, you should do this, you should do that. Well, I did it. Okay, I first launched it with Teespring, and um, I didn't like the quality. I didn't like the quality, I didn't like the service. I ordered a couple of shirts, and I sent them back two or three times. And they did make them right. In the long run, they did make them right if, if, they, were, if they were bad. But it was just... It's not that I don't like big companies. I like big companies, but I'm a real believer in building you know, small businesses. And a guy I knew for got 20 years, Jimmy, has a screen printing shop in downtown LA, and he's a good guy, a really good guy. And um, he did some, a lot of the logo gear that I used for um, Bound Angels. And I said, hey, would you be interested in doing the fulfillment on this stuff? And it's a, it's, it's a pain, right? I mean, there's a lot of people, a lot of stuff. And he said he would love to do it. It would give him work. And, um, and he has employees that he's hiring too. So I took the business away from Teespring and I brought it over to Jimmy. And so I just want to tell you a little bit about the gear. So every time you watch me doing a dog training video, I'm wearing a shirt. I'm wearing like, this is the goofy shirt, the goofy icon shirt. I'm going to show it to you in a second on, on the screen. Um, there's this really great shirt, which is the goofy blue line shirt supporting all working dogs and, and, and law enforcement. You guys all know how I feel about that. There's the Maya every day is training day shirt which is camo, it comes in two, st two styles. We're changing the font on it right now. Um, you, if you get one early, you'll still get the original font. Then there is the uh, Goofy Brush, Zen Brush Stroke, which is similar to the Goofy Icon shirt I have on. So it, they're all hand printed. They're not, there's no big machines going on. There's no crazy production. It's one guy sitting downtown LA working on an hourly salary, getting paid to do this. It's, it's, and it's not a sweatshop. Um, and then if you look at Alan's wearing the um, goofy brush hat, this is a really cool hat. It's a oh, decky trucker it. style hat. You got, your, you got the hat on, Alan. You don't even see it. Yeah. Um, it's a reflective um, decal right here that's really, really bitching. It's, uh, it reflects in the night. If you're walking, it's a little safety thing. They're decky trucker hats. They're the snapbacks, the real good quality mesh back hats. Um, I wear it every single day, every day. And um, the shirts, by the way, are super good quality, thin cotton. Um, you can wear them in the summer or the winter. I'm not doing short sleeves for the next couple of months because I want to kind of get these out there while we still have winter and fall. Then I'll announce the t-shirts in the summer. We will have them and we'll announce different styles. But right now there's four different styles. I'm going to show you the, the merchandise right here. Here's the um, official apparel, the store. And you can see, again, just like the site I started small, I wanted to start the apparel small because it's very, it's hand done, it's hand shipped to you. Um, it's great quality. Uh, I can promise you, you're gonna, when you get it, you're going to be happier than when you ordered it because it feels great. Janet wears it. Janet's really picky about her clothing. She's, she's got amazing taste and she, you'll always see her in one of these shirts. So that means a lot. And as well as one of these hats. So um, you can go there, you can order it right now. We can only ship to the U.S. I know... Um, that that's not really fun, but uh, we'll figure out some kind of fulfillment, uh, you know, for Europe or something later. Please understand that if you, you know, if you're upset about it, it's nothing personal. I just I can't um, I can't get it overseas. And I know to Canada it's like thirty bucks to ship a shirt, which is like the price of the shirt. So if you wanted that, you know, obviously if you order two or three shirts, we could make it would be worth your while more. But um, get yourself one. I mean, get yourself one because we want to see. Um, we want to get your pictures wearing them. We want to put those pictures on the site. We want to share um, the love of, of, of um, uh, you know, of uh, dogs with people. So, so see there, they come. All the shirts come in small, medium, large, and extra large. Janet wears a small. Um, you've probably seen her in a picture or two on Instagram, so you kind of know. Um, and you know, we'll add more. I'll add double XLs. I'll add extra smalls. Right now, I've had to put you know a few thousand bucks out of my pocket to just get this line launched. But it's mine. I control it. It's not like it's some big company. You won't see these shirts anywhere else. If you do, let me know. It's, it's a copyright violation. But um, all short, all long sleeve, all black will launch different colors and stuff. Once these start selling, I gotta, I gotta pay back all the money I put, I put out to it. 
but I guarantee you, you're really, really, really going to love them. So order yourself a shirt. Are we doing the, um, we have a discount for everybody now? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there's the members 20 for 20% 20 okay. off for all members. I think anybody can use it though, if they just so, use that code. Okay. So, so why don't we do this? You got 145 people in here. I'll make a deal that everybody gets that 20% discount um, for the next, let's say three, four, five days. So if you, anything you order for the next three or four or five days, you're going to get the members 20% discount. Order it today. That discount's going to be gone. Um, we'll always have a discount for members, by the way, always. But um, you, you, you'll, want, you'll want one of these shirts or two. I mean, I think I've got all of them. But then again, I have to have all of them. Right? Yeah. And Al, Alan's got the hoodie on. And we're going to actually do uh, the hoodie is coming too. I'm just we haven't finished printing the hoodie yet. But the hoodies are really good quality, heavy hoodies. Um, Alan lives in, in, in like the North Pole. Michigan which is like michigan right and uh, yep. and and he's you know pretty, whoops i got you on the wrong side there i want you on that side um um and he wears it and he you know he keeps warm with it when he's out with his dogs and stuff it so, is it's 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 one of my favorite hoodies honestly i'm not just saying that to be a, a sellout yeah <laughs> um yeah everything is top quality it's not some cheap you know crap that people are gonna you know that's gonna fall apart these things wash really well in fact, before I launched the line, I went and had three or four of them made, and I just washed them and washed them and washed them and wear them. And I'm, I'm rough on my clothes because I'm out training. I'm, you know, working the dogs and stuff. So you're really, really going to love it. I promise you got uh, these hats. They, they come in camo and uh, the black that Alan's wearing. And then we'll fulfill more. Right now, it's just everything's limited quantity, but it's on hand. So you can get it shipped to you within a day or two, and which means most places in the States, you'll have it in three to five days. So um, by the next member update, you could have, you could have your shirt. Um, Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So anyway, anything else we want to add, Alan, about the site? Um, no, I mean, I think that pretty much covers, you know, covers everything. Mm -hmm. Let me look real quick at my notes, I guess. Okay. No, I mean, again, no, everything is split off into courses. There was a bug when we did first launch this for members. Mm -hmm. So if you go into courses, if you're a member and signed in, if you go into courses and you see all courses 105 and my course is 105. It was just a bug. It actually it pushed all the courses into your your my courses. So just mm -hmm. send us an email, um, info at robertcabral.com and you know, let me know your member email and I'll reset this back to zero and then you'll be able to start tracking your courses. Great. So Great. that's that's the only other thing. That's awesome. Okay. So um do you want to jump off, Alan? Do you want to stay on or what do you want to do? Because I'm going to do, take a couple of questions for these people who have been so dedicated to staying here. Oh, no, this is this is a, making me a nervous wreck, so I will jump off. All right, let me get you off of there. Thanks, Alan. Everybody say goodbye to Alan. Thanks for all the hard work. Um, and thanks, for thanks everybody. On. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Okay, good. Uh, you can stay See on. Ya. You can stay on, but do, or you jump off. I'm going to, do, I'm going to click a yacht here now. All right. So, all right. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm going to I'm going to mute Alan's microphone too, so he can't you want to hear him anymore. Um, let's take some questions, okay? So th there's all the great information, um, all the stuff on the site. I hope that um, you will order a couple of shirts, support the cause, um, support you know Jimmy downtown making the shirts, and uh, I appreciate that as well. So I'm going to take um, some questions here. There was one question actually. Jana brought me down a question. Let me see if I can find it. It's on her phone. Um, Okay, and it was from YL647. It says, why does it confuse the dog to press the e-collar stim and say the command at the same time? How about pressing the stim before saying the command as Larry Crone recommends? Well, Larry's got great work on, I'm definitely not saying he doesn't know what he's doing. He definitely knows what he's doing, but he's using a different system. And there's a couple different ways to use the e-collar. Not, not all of them are wrong and not all of them might be right for your dog. So. Um, I like to give, I use the, the collar primarily as a corrective, corrective tool. So the dog is far away from me, I can't reach him, I can't get to him, and I have to um, correct him. He's out in the field. So like with Dwayne, we're using it now. So if Dwayne goes, picks up um, the bumper, and instead of coming straight back to detours, I can block him with the e-collar, no pause, bump, bump, no pause, bump, bump. What that teaches the dog is that there is a correction coming. It, it preemptively tells him when I say no, you have a second to fix yourself before I give you another, before I give you a physical correction, right? So I'm giving a verbal cue, then I'm giving him a physical correction on the e-collar, just like I would do if I was popping him on a leash. 
Um, using the collar in another way, um, it's, you know, before that is a way to get the dog to check in with you. You really have to determine what method of dog training you want to follow. The worst thing you can do is try them all on your dog because all you're going to end up with is a confused dog. Follow somebody that you respect, who doesn't matter who that is, there's plenty of good dog trainers on, on the web, um, and, 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 and go through with it. Just follow the path through. This is the hardest thing people have with their dogs. They, they follow something and then they think, oh, you know, I'm going to try it another way. And then they go try it another way, and then that doesn't work. Then they try another way. Now you just have a confused dog. You have to persevere. You have to push through. There's going to be hiccups. No matter what you do, your dog is going to end up being confused. If when the dog is confused, you stop training, you leave the dog in confusion. That's critical to understand. You don't ever want to leave the dog in confusion. So um, make sure that's clear. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Um, let's see. Um, you know, if you're looking for, Scott, if you're looking for IPO ring sport clubs, what you should do is go to um, germanshepherddog.com, which is the Schutzen USA club, uh, sorry, main headquarters, and they'll tell you, I guarantee there's a club in Michigan or two. And um, for ring sports, if you want Mondial Ring or French Ring, just Google French Ring or Mondial Ring clubs in your state, and I guarantee you, you will, you will for sure find one. I can tell you that right now. It just depends if it's close enough to you. Let's see. Um, if there's not that many questions, you guys, Janet seems to be handling the whole thing. Okay, here's somebody, Blue Sky. The question is, is it normal for my three and a half month old Malinois, don't want to lie down on snow, not all the time, but without snow, she was lie down always, now is okay. Yeah, I mean, a dog can be, you know, dogs are what I always say is contextual. So they'll learn something in one place and they won't know it in another. In other words, you teach the dog to lie down in grass, and then you ask them to lie down on you know, a tile floor, and they're freaked out because they don't understand it the same way. That's not abnormal. So teach your dog to lie down, make it fun, play games with them in the snow, and do that. It's, you, you guys are lucky if you live in an area where you have snow and adverse weather. Here in California, we're always, I mean, right now it's going to be 87, I think Janice said 87 degrees today, which is absolutely insane. Um, it's like fire weather for us here. It's not good. People think, oh, I'm jealous. It's really good. Janet and I love the rain. We love, you know, cozy weather. We love the thunderstorms. And we really don't get that here. And also, because of that, you'll see that a lot of dogs don't um, have exposure to things like, like rain. So when you have rain, the dogs are freaked out because they've never seen it. They've never experienced it. Now, I got lucky when I got goofy as a young puppy. We had a big rainy season. So I would take them out every day to the park in the, in the pouring, pouring rain and had him out there training and playing and, and engaging. And we had a great time with it. And he, he loves the rain. He's got no issues. But if your dog doesn't like something, get him out in it and expose the dog to it so that, you know, so that they, can be, um, they can be exposed to it. Let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, Janet's got another question for me. Excellent. What would I do without Janet, huh? Seriously. And she's beautiful. OK, Haven, the Shetland she Sheepdog. I almost read Sleepdog because I don't have my, my glasses on. Robert, will you ever do a training episode with a smaller dog like a Sheltie? I would love to see it. You know, I've done some training. We did the, the little um, Border Collie, um, the little Schnauzer and everything. I do, you know, my personal dogs that, that, that I have here with Janet are, are basically only um, what we have, which is our two labs and then uh, Goofy and Maya. Boz is, um, no, we don't forget Boz. We don't forget Boz at all, do we? Um, Boz is 18, you know? I mean, Boz, every day, if you knew my routine, literally, I'm sitting here in my office, right in front of me, right here, is the outside, our little yard that we have in the back, and Boz is sitting in an X-Pen, and I watch him, and, you know, I, I go out there every hour, make sure he's okay, I give him a kiss, and, you know, hug him and kiss him, and I give him some water, because he can't drink right now, so I give him water with a syringe, but he can eat. Right? So I make sure four times a day he gets a good helping of chicken and rice. Um, I know it's not ketogenic. I, I get it. But you know, he's 18 years old. And basically, you know, we're just sustaining him and keeping him really happy and healthy. But that's my routine. So, um, OK, now Mufasa says, hi, Robert, how do I deal with my younger pup being too rough with the elder pup? Well, you, you do that by exactly that. You, you, you control the dog. Like when, my, when Goofy was a little too rough with uh, Dwayne in the beginning, he got corrected. If Dwayne is going to be too rough with a puppy I bring in, he's going to get corrected. People always ask me, how do I correct a dog for doing something wrong? And the, uh, the answer is, 
you correct them, right? You have to block the behavior, whether you have to say, hey, or get your foot in there, you know, in between them, walk between them, grab one by the scruff of the neck and tell them, hey, knock it off, or anything like that. Whatever that is, whatever it is, you've got to stop the behavior. It's not, you're not asking me how to do surgery, how to remove a gallbladder. You're asking me how to stop a behavior, and you stop a behavior by stopping the behavior. It's really, really, really that simple. Um, let's see, here's Mark has a question. Says, um, can I reteach my dog with new structure than originally taught? Absolutely, I mean, you can, and I proved it this week with Goofy in teaching him the rollover. Goofy never had a rollover until I did it in that video. I lured it, I shaped it, and I marked it in the exact way that I wanted him to have it. And Goofy's 11 years old, he's gonna be 11 in March. So yeah, you can teach an old dog, you can redo things, you have to be consistent, you have to be focused, and you have to make sure that the dog understands that. Okay, Janice just gave me another one. From Delara, is that the one? It says, hello, I have a question. I started my puppy to poop with rewards outside, and today I didn't give her a reward and she didn't poop outside. How to stop with reward? So she do it on her own. Well, you know, you're just marking the dog. I mean, first of all, I don't believe really in giving dogs a, um, a reward for pooping, right? I mean, I give them praise, good girl, good boy, that's it, let's go. Um, because rewards are something you want to do when you can get the dog to do something, right? You can't get the dog to go to the bathroom, to relieve themselves. It's, it's kind of extreme. So just a good praise, that a girl, that a boy is the way you should do it. And if the dog, you know the dog needs to go potty, take him outside and just sit and wait or stand and wait. Don't engage the dog, don't talk to the dog. Um, you can't force them to do what you what they really should do. Okay, question here is, uh, Lori says, at what age do you think it's best to begin protection training? You know, so the old school Germans used to do something very different with obedience. What they would do is they would let the dog have tons and tons and tons of freedom, and then they would start with very, very hard structure when the dog was a year old. And the reason they did that is because they believed in harder corrections. Now, that's old school Germans, and new school Germans don't do that anymore, and neither does really any decent trainer. And all training starts day one, right? So whether you're doing protection training, obedience training, agility training, uh, nose work training, whatever, confirmation training, day one. You know why? Because you're luring and shaping it. And if you watch really good protection dog trainers, they'll have an eight-week-old puppy on a little bite rag. They'll have them chasing. They'll have them like they'll be doing... Um, introducing sounds like stick hits or, or things like uh, cans and bottles and stuff like that, plastic bottles, obviously. But yeah, the sooner you can get them in, because you want to get all those things exposed to the dog while the dog is really, really young. So the dog can definitely uh, pick, on, pick up on them and not become superstitious to things that he hasn't heard yet. Uh, Steve has a question that says, I have a golden retriever, German shepherd mix, and a catahoula. Both dogs are extremely obedient to me, but basically ignore my wife. How do I get them to listen to her? Um, it's a tricky one. Now, dogs generally will pick out the weaker of the two uh, people who live together. And sometimes it's the husband, sometimes it's the wife. It's not, it, dogs don't determine that based on the sex of the person. They determine it based on the person's um, fortitude, I should say, or, or, or strength to, to uh, control the situation. So if your wife is very forgiving and cuddly and sweet and coddling and affectionate, like Janet's doing with Goofy right now, in front, right in front of the camera, right behind the camera, I should say, um, then the dog is more likely to think that the command isn't really as serious. If the, if the dog is always made to do what you want him to do on step one, then the dog's more likely to do it. So more than likely, your wife is very permissive and very sweet and very kind and very very compassionate to the dog. And that's why the dog is less likely to listen to her because he's not made to listen to her. Remember, in the Tao, the Chinese, uh, the Tao Te Ching, it says that to know the big things and the little things and the little things and the big things. So that's something that people oftentimes don't know. So in other words, they don't think like, well, why is it so important that you know, th that the dog does this the first time. It's not a big deal. I don't really care if he does that because it's not that important to me. It's all important, right? In the grand scheme of things with the dog, the dog only understands everything or nothing. So if it's pick and choose, then the dog is gonna pick and choose when they want it. And your wife needs to be a little st more strict on your, um, on, your, on your dog. This one's swag, Yusuf, Yusuf 
says, at what age does a female German Shepherd mature? Well, most um, dogs mature based on their, their, their size of, of breed. So in other words, like small dogs uh, will fully mature more around a year or so. Their growth, it's usually one with their growth plates closed and stuff. I always say like a dog, like a German Shepherd, a medium to large size dog, um, will mature around 18 to, 18 to 24 months, and then they'll be fully matured by the time they're 36 months. John Paschal says, I'm going to get this question off of here. Um, ideas for curbing prey drive in regards to reactivity. I do capping exercises with member site. Nine-month-old Aussie, when she sees people, she growls but not aggressive, leaks with dogs in sight. Well, so you need to give the dog a place to put that energy. And I think I talk about that a lot in the member section and the members' videos. But if your dog is super excited, then that is the dog's prey drive. The dog's prey drive is his desire to see, smell, chase, bite, kill, and eat, right? Basically, that's, that's the idea of prey drive, or, 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 and that goes right into play drive. Now, if you can get the dog when he's in this excitable um, drive to whatever, he sees somebody, he's growling, he's lunging, he's barking, he's doing whatever, whether that's aggressive or not has no relevance at all. I mean, it's, it's relevant in that it's less dangerous if it's not, but it can manifest into more aggressive behavior because it becomes frustrating. So prey can go to frustration, and frustration can go to aggression. So I always like to get the dog to do something different. And a great thing to get the dog to do is just to do you know, something like a down or a sit or a, you know, play dead or uh, you know, whatever that might be, shake paw. Take the drive, don't squash the drive out. That's a big mistake people make. They squash the drive out. They want the dog to stop it. Well, but you're, if you're telling the dog to stop one thing, you have to give him something else to do, right? You have to think you're dealing with a two-year-old child. You can't just take the Nintendo away, or I don't even know if kids are two years play Nintendo, or if Nintendo's even still in business, but if you ask him not to do this, you have to give him something to do. So as opposed to, you know, stop bothering me, you can say, go sit in your chair and do, a, do, 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 do people still have coloring books? I don't know. All right. Um, Steve says, how can I get an older dog not to show teeth and growl at our new puppy? It only happens in the house, not outside. Well, so that's a territorial issue. And what I would probably do is make sure that, the, first of all, the younger puppy shouldn't get in the dog's face early on. But you should have better control over your dog, Steve. You've got to make sure that this dog can be controlled. You should put your dog on a place, on a bed or something. And if the dog shows his teeth, be aware that if the dog is showing his teeth, it's not always aggressive. It most likely is aggressive, but it's not always aggressive. Sometimes dogs show their teeth in a playful manner. Sometimes dogs show their teeth as if they're smiling. I know that sounds stupid, but I've talked about this and taught about this in shelters immensely. So. If you see it's in aggression, you should come down on the dog. It's not acceptable for a big dog to be aggressive to a little dog, not at all. But if he's showing his teeth in a playful manner, like trying to get him, hey, back off, or hey, I'm the big guy, that's a different thing. You gotta look at the whole body language of the dog. I talk about that a lot. And again, in the courses I have coming up, oops, my camera went out. Sorry about that, guys. Goofy went under the t table and, and disconnected my, um, my video cable. So, um, yeah, you need to control the dog. That's cr critical. And then they got another question here from Shrek's other daughters. Robert, why will my GSD not care a fire from gun but will react to the truck? Well, either the dog was trained around the gunfire, but different sounds mean different things to dogs. If a dog was exposed to one sound, it doesn't mean he's going to be good with another sound. That's real critical to understand for, for you and for your dog training. Get your dog to understand if the, if the truck is making him a little bit nervous, then you've got to get the dog in at a distance from trucks and bring, bring the truck sounds in slowly. Look, I'll be honest with you, it's not a big deal. Goofy has, you know, Goofy hates lightning, he hates thunder, he fireworks and all that stuff. It doesn't make him a bad dog. It just makes him, those are things that he's more sensitive to. That's it. You know, that, that's just, that's really it. Um, again, sorry about that uh, video breaking out. I'm back now, so. Um, let's see. By the way, somebody's asking if Alan can recommend um, 
IPO clubs in Michigan. Yeah, Alan can't. Alan is a technical website guy. He's not an IPO recommending or a dog training guy. Um, let's see here. Okay, we've got a lot of questions. I'm way behind. I'm only going to take a couple more questions because I got because I got to jump off. I've got a member chat coming up in about ten minutes. Um, okay, bearded bove, bove. I don't know. On the subject of consistency, why do you think a lot of trainers are too quick to change methods, commands, and introduce prong and e-collars? Well. You know, I don't think, like, I'll give you a great example. Do you mind if I share this about the e-collar thing? No, we're no, no, not at all. Um, it, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you what it is, is people are, people are always trying to figure things out. They're looking for an easier path. They're looking to go their way. They're, they're looking for this idea, right, that they, that they have in their mind that it's going to work this way. Then the minute it doesn't, it's kind of like a relationship, right? You're, you're, you're dating somebody and something goes slightly wrong and then they're like, oh, I'll find somebody else. But that's stupid, right? That's really, really retarded. Like sometimes Janet gets mad at me and I say, you know, you're, you're not gonna ever do better. Never do better than me. I mean, I love and adore her. And so then she hunkers down and says, well, I could do a lot worse than Robert and she sticks with me. You've gotta approach your dog training that way. You really do. You have to, first of all, before you, you, there's a time when you have to make a change, right? If it's really, really not working, but you have to kind of pick a path and see it through. If you've picked the right path, it may not work instantly. You will have hiccups in anything. I think people just give up too easily. Tons of times, I mean, I have friends, and, and Janet will back me on this, and I'm gonna share this, is, you know, how many times do we talk, honey, about, about you know, people, they wanna get, they wanna work out, they wanna get in shape, they go, God, Robert's in good shape, I gotta do it. Well, you know what, I don't really wanna lift weights. I'm gonna do, uh, you know, uh, some Zumba classes or something. Well, if you wanna do what I do, then you should do the workout I do. And if you wanna train your dog the way I do, then you should train your dog the way I do. I think people give up on things really, really quickly, and then the other contingent is people stick with it way too long. Look at your dog. Look at what your dog is telling you. If your dog is not getting what you're trying to teach him, then you've got to look at it again. You've got to revisit it. You've got to readdress it and, and stay as consistent as you can. Okay, Richard says, my one-year-old golden Labrador gets overexcited when someone visits, jumps with excitement, or when he sees someone went out on walks, he is too playful. How can I control this? Well, he's a year old, so... What I would do is teach him a good sit command, a good down command, or anything like that, and then get the dog to understand that that's what he should be doing. And, and for a while, don't have the dog meeting other people. Don't have the dog just, you know, ad, ad, ad hoc, just getting out there and being able to play with people. Because it's that excitement, it's the fulfillment of that excitement that makes the dog act like that. Because eventually they're going to get to play with the other person, and that's when you have a problem. Edgar says, kennel versus crate for puppies, which is better? Um, it's going to be a crate because a kennel is going to give them too much room to move around in, and they're going to just learn to, to mess in their, in, their, in, their crate, in their kennels, and then they're going to end up doing it in their crate. So, you know, some people put a crate in the kennel so that the dog understands that, but it's very hard for a dog to learn potty um, uh, m m matters the, in a kennel, and a lot of times kennel dogs have a really hard time accust becoming accustomed to a home because they think the whole house is a kennel. Um, okay, let's see what else we got here. Okay, I got, uh, okay, D Shadow says, my eight-month-old golden retriever has an undescended testicle. A vet has suggested neutering him before three years to avoid risk of testicular cancer. Um, I would. If, if a dog has, a, I forget what's called, crypto something or another, um, you're going to probably want to do that. I would. Um, do I, Leo says, do I recommend the neck tech prong? I like the regular prongs. I have no problem with them. People, you know, criticize it and whatever, but it's the same. You just, it's, it's a horse of a different color. It's still a horse. Uh, all right, let's see here. Doug. Um, how long it typically takes to train a dog to do a nice competition heel, assuming they train 30 to 45 total minutes a day? Well, so that's a good question, Doug, but there's no real answer. So some dogs will get a competition heel in six months to a year. Some dogs will never get it. It really depends how your dog is picking up those lessons. Um, I'm always looking for the question mark in front of the question, just so you know. 
Bandera says, should you neuter a male dog? If so when, you know, it's a personal decision. I don't believe th that much in it because um, I think you should be able, you know, it's, it's the only real situation where we change the animal to adapt to us. I mean, the dog is, you know, you're, you're basically, you know, uh, like just messing with a dog, right? You're, you're mutilating an animal. You're, you're taking, it's the same thing as docking a tail or ears and, neutering and all that you just but but the neutering changes the overall personality it's like the worst thing to do to a dog people say oh you got to do it you got to do it i'll tell you why you have to do it if you're irresponsible and you can't keep hold of your dog and you have your dog running around with female dogs and getting dogs pregnant and you're responsible for um for for um you know dogs going to shelters you shouldn't even have a dog right because you're gonna let your neuter dog run around it's gonna get hit by a car or it's gonna bite somebody else the only difference is when the dog is intact you're adding eight to 10 dogs to the shelter, which is so bizarre. I mean, it's just sickening to me when people do that. So I really, really, really don't, um, I'm not a big fan of neutering. I'm not a big fan of tail docking. I'm not a big fan of ear cropping. I'm not a big fan of any of that stuff. So that's that. Anyway, listen guys, I'm, I've got to stop here. I'm so sorry. I know there's tons more questions. I thank you guys all for coming in here. Um, I'll be back. I promise I'll, I'll do another one of these really, really soon. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget, visit robertcabral.com, <clears throat> the new site. Alan told you all about it. I think it's fantastic. I think you're really going to love it. And um, get your shirts, get your hats, uh, get your logo gear. Support a small business, uh, one of them being mine, the other one being, um, you know, you, when, by the way, when you wear my gear, when you buy um, my, my hats or my shirts, you're supporting the work I'm doing. You're allowing me to keep the YouTube channel free because it takes a lot of work to keep going too. And I thank you guys for it. Visit robertcabral.com. All the best products, um, all the best dog training, everything you could possibly want, all in one place. And I will see you guys really, really soon. Thanks for being here. God bless all of you.